All right, how are we doing guys? It's another edition of the rounds bringing you the freshest and tastiest in all the brews. My name of course is Glenn and uh, it's a bittersweet day today because I have so thoroughly enjoyed my trip through the Lakefront 88. We have come to our final destination and I saved, you know it's not fair about that statement. So I was going to say I saved the best for last, but the fact is, is all four of them completely blew me away and pressed the crap out of me. But anyway, needless to say, we're in Milwaukee. We're hanging out with the guys at Lakefront. And today, we're going to be scoping out the Bridge Burner. Now, this dates back to a story they tell about the founding of Milwaukee and how a rivalry between the two towns caused one side to burn a bridge down, which actually ended up bringing the two communities close together. Sweet story. Doesn't have much to do with beer, but hey, they're proud to be where they're from. That's always a good thing. Uh, this brew comes in at 45 IBUs. It comes in at 8% alcohol by volume. Uh, uses three varietals of hops and what they coined a fruity ale yeast that requires longer fermentation time. Um, this should tell you a couple of things. Uh, a, the, the yeast, I mean, it's not actually fruit. It's not like a cider or anything like that, a shandy, whatever. Um, but it just lends itself more to those should be fruity ester notes, which should balance out the hops pretty well. Uh, there's a healthy amount of roast crystal malt in here as well. Um, and a lot of times that's going to be used as your backbone for like a nice amber or red ale. Um, however, of interesting note, this one actually won a gold medal in 09 for the Los Angeles County Barley Wine, uh, Los Angeles County Fair Barley Wine category, uh, which is interesting. Because um, I'm not sure at 45 IBUs and 8%, I would call it a barley wine. Um, but it's good to good to challenge challenge yourself get out of your bounds that kind of thing this actually pours dark with heavy body um, and I've got a little bit of residual flocculent in there um, you do get a bit of that fruit in the nose and it's partially the hops but not all of it. I think some of it is actually that ale yeast they're talking about. But you can see, that's got plenty of body. You're not seeing through the glass. It pours a very deep red, almost a brown. It's got a rocky, uh, off-white head to it. And is absolutely delicious. Um... I'm actually surprised by the, the clean finish. I mean, there's a bit of lingering, obviously, at 8%. Uh, and with this dark, a malt backbone, there is it's going to linger. But there's different ways for beers to linger. They can linger with malt. They can linger with hops. You can get some of that uh, yeast spice that kind of sticks around. Um, and this one, I think, leaves just a bit of that, that fruit residue. Uh, and that's probably both the malt and the yeast working together. Um, but it's got a great hop profile to it. And it's hop forward, and I don't think it's overly hoppy at all. I don't think it drinks like 45 IBUs or 8% alcohol by volume. Lakefront, you guys are freaking amazing. Um, keep pushing your stuff out, man. I mean, everything I've had so far has absolutely impressed the crap out of me. And I hope that my viewers, you guys, are going to get out there and give them a shot. So, that being said, hope you're doing what I'm doing. I will see you guys next time on the rounds over our next pint. Have a good one, guys.